I want to first start off with one of my heroes, one of the nonprofit techies who have been building community for a long time. That's Jai Dua from Agentic Media, Digital Media. And so let's send it over to Jai, who can talk a little bit about AI to start today's event. Thanks, Eli. Okay. So I'm going to be talking about AI and art, unlocking the potential of artificial intelligence for nonprofits. All the images, of course, were generated by an AI art process. And I use Staple Diffusion, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. So what can AI art do for you? I think that as a, if you're a scrappy nonprofit, there's a lot of things. So creating pictures for posters, imagining scenarios, drawing very specific images for your website, and also providing images or pictures of people. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So when is that like pictures for posters? And these are generated by giving a text prompt. So you would say, draw me a picture of people engaged in everyday digital activities, and you might get something like this back. Another one I was really interested in doing and I was sharing on my Twitter was imagining scenarios. So here's one of Vancouver flooding. We know that sometimes trying to create some emotional aspect can really impact people's desire for action. So Vancouver flooding was one of the ones I was looking at. I also did a ones on Vancouver fire, which was also disturbing. Images for your website. You can see on the left there, an AI generated image of a wolf. On the right, some large cedar trees, some old growth forests. Again, these were very straightforward prompts, just saying, show me a solo wolf in a forest. Uh, the other one was draw me a dreamy picture of a cedar tree with a small person. One of the other things you can do is use faces of people. So there's a site called thispersondoesnotexist.com, and I'm going to drop a couple of links into the chat in a moment, but you can see the quality of this has really increased. And one of the interesting things is you can see one of my clients using a picture on the left there and using them for examples that can help clarify or to give a little sense of what the kind of human aspect of, ironically, the human aspect of a particular legal issue on their website. So how do you do all of this? Okay, so as I mentioned, these text prompts. So here was a prompt, and I've been giving you the very simple prompt, but there are a little bit more complicated ones. So here you can see solo snow leopard in the snowy mountains, photo, highly detailed, smooth, et cetera, et cetera. But the result was actually quite lovely. And you can, in most of these, you can get a number of different ones at the same time. So you can request a batch. And I'm just gonna drop into the chat a couple of these links so that you can see. One of the interesting pieces that you can see is that there are a number of different ones that will do a little bit more powerful. And I've given you a very simple one to understand. Yeah, let's just talk about quickly the caveats. So the images generated have no copyright and you can't really own them in the sense of that they weren't really created by a human. But there are some court cases of people trying to understand what the issues are around that. Also, a lot, some of the AIs are trained on a kind of large scrape of images off the web. So that can also exacerbate our biases as well as grabbing images from porn or violent imagery. And as somebody's been pointing out, some artists are angry that AIs are trained on the work of living artists. And that's been a little bit more around the issue of some of the court cases. And then some artists are concerned that artificial intelligence, these AI art generators will take their jobs away. It's really, I think, a tool and it's up to you to decide whether this fits within your uh, toolkit or not. But hopefully you can try at least to experiment and see what results you have. And that's really it. So thank you.